Hi, I'm Maddie from Quilt Smart. This is Benny. He likes to help. And today I want to show you our Chucky Rest. This is a new pattern for us. And it is the sort of big sister, I think you could say, of our little gadget cushion. So here's the gadget cushion, which holds a cell phone nicely. And the Chucky Rest is here, obviously a little bit bigger. And that can hold things like a um, folder. It can hold um, glasses still. It can hold an iPad, a little, this is the mini iPad, and there's a book that's coming out soon. And so all those things it can hold, it can even hold, I have one here that we put a little, we made it out of red flannel and put a little ball on the end so it looks like a Santa Claus hat, but that, they will also hold the bigger iPad. So that's a, um, and here's one little, cute one with bicycles. It's a great little thing. I use mine in the, I have one in the kitchen and one in my bed and I, I use them uh, for reading or the, the cookbook, um, my cell phone if I want to put it in the kitchen. You always know where your things are by doing that. So what you're going to need is some fabric and I'm going to show you how to, how to make that. And you're also going to need a few supplies that are a little different. These are to stuff it with. So I use, this one's pretty big, so if you, you can use walnut shells, but it might be a little bit expensive. So I use rice, um, which is very inexpensive. And this says organic, you don't need organic rice. You can, <laughs> um, you, I was in a pinch when I got this. So you can use just, you get like a bulk rice. I think they're like maybe $13 for this huge bag so you can get that at the discount stores and then I like a funnel to put into the opening that I'll show you later to use and then I use this to put the rice in and I pour the put this into the um, techie rest opening and pour the rice into that and then I seal the opening with liquid stitch um, or another fabric glue what you don't want to do is use a uh, school glue because I did and it makes it really hard and the fabric glue does not. So better to use the fabric glue. Um, the sew line would probably work too. I like their brand too. So I'm going to show you how to make this now and we'll come right down here and when you open your pack you get two panels of interfacing and that's what this looks like. And you get a couple of little things that you can put on a tag to tell the person if you're giving it as a gift what it is because trust me they won't know if you just give it to them and don't don't say what it is then you also get the instructions here they're very clear and um, very clear illustrations here showing the funnel with the rice being poured in and I'm going to take you through these steps right now so that you have a good vision of what how to make this so the very first thing you're going to do is um, there's four techie rest panels in each, not panels, I'm sorry, there's two panels, but there's four techie rests in each package. So you're going to cut this out on the outside lines, okay? And then you're going to fuse that to a piece of fabric. Now, what I want to show you on this one, the reason I've got this one on the here is because uh, two things. First of all, this is a directional print, the rainbows are, and so I don't want them to be upside down. I suppose they could be smiles, but um, I want them to be this way. And the other thing is, um, and, and this is the top, so you know that by where it says top opening. Okay. The other thing is this little dot. This little dot is important. If you want a rainbow to be exactly in the middle of your techie rest, um, like the bicycle that I have in this one, um, it's not smack in the middle, but it's also not chopped off. So I would have used this to center that. And that might depend on your fabric or how much you have left of your fabric. Um, this one, by the way, is also made with two fabrics. So you can sew them together and then put this down too. Okay, so the very first thing you're going to do is find where you want to put this and then you're going to iron it down. And um, the fabric that I have here is a flannel. It doesn't matter what you use. That's one of the nice things about the interfacing is you can use about any fabric. Um, okay, so you're gonna iron that down. And then I have a piece 
here to show you the next step here. And after you iron it down, you are going to cut it out. And the bottom part of it, you sew together in a tie. Um, and that ends up being the little parts that you can put a pen through or you can hold. I'll show you those as we go on here. So there's little marks here on the interfacing where you will put a cut strip of this. Okay, I'll show you that next. And I, oh, and also you sew on the guidelines. And these are printed. I'm gonna show you where it says guideline. You wanna sew on those because it gives you a, the marker for when you have to sew on them again later in the pattern. There's another one of the little tabs. Okay, this one has the tabs cut and ready to ready to sew the tacky rest. So this is another good example of a directional one, the Santas. If you did it, you know, the other way, it would be upside down Santas, which might be okay, but um, you might not want them that way. So this just, I've showed you how to do the, the tabs there. And this is all in the directions, how big to cut them and that kind of thing, how to make those. And again, you can see the, I'm not sure if you can see, but um, there is the lines for the guidelines where I sewed those. So the next step after this is to fold this in half and you've got an A and a B line and you're gonna sew both of those. So I'm sewing on the A line, I've already sewed on the B line. And I just want to tell you that you want to backstitch because it's easier when you turn it. And also, um, when you're going over the hump where the tabs are, just go a little bit slower. You might want a walking foot too. And you just keep keep sewing down here to the dot and then also sew the bee line. So this is the Santa one, folded in half on the line. And then I've sewn line A and you want to backstitch and just go slow over the tab. And I've also sewn line B. And you can see that that leaves an opening here, which is what you want. Okay, and you want to backstitch there too. You can see the guidelines where they were sewn. And the next step is not hard, but a lot of people think it's a little tricky at first. It's hard to understand by a picture, but not when you see it in uh, 3D here. Um, so what you do is you take this and you're forming like almost like a little triangle, but you're bringing the tab together with the seam. And you can see that the marks on the interfacing go along with that. This part will be left open and this part will be stitched. So I'm going to do that right now. And there's a tab there, so that's what you would want to go a little bit slow over that too. So I'm going to start at the um, at the dot, and I'm going to go forward just a bit, and then backwards, and then I'm just going to continue. Whoops. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just going to continue all the way to the end, and also backstitch there. So now we just turn it right side out. You want to turn it through the top opening because the bottom one is really tiny. And so you just turn it right side out. And got that. And then take your pointer creaser and just push out the corners a little bit. One corner is going to be super easy because that's an opening. And the other one, this one, you just want to poke out. Don't do it too hard because it is fabric. And this is the side that just pokes out because we want the hole there. So I'm gonna take the pointer crease. Oh, one more over here too, up toward the top. So, um, okay. Now I'm going to fold this back in just to make sure that that's very nice. That seam allowance there. Uh, and I'm gonna maybe just finger press it a little bit. You could could have done that with the pointer creaser too. Uh, okay, just pull that out a little bit. And I did not get that in there very well. I'm gonna go back and there. Okay, so now you just wanna iron that bottom part. Pull out your tab, iron it. And now we're gonna sew over these guidelines. That'll give us two parts to um, fill. 
um, by the way, this is doing it for me. If you ever want to travel with these before you've, um, or set them aside before you've stuffed them, you can kind of fold them like that and they fold flat. So till you're ready to stuff them. Okay. So now we're going to sew on these guidelines, which is going to keep this part, um, free from, uh, from the filler that we put in it. And I sew this just like I sewed the guideline. Just go, just like I sewed it before. So I'm just pulling that out, going right over the guidelines, and I go across and down and over. So you might want to use thread that matches. Um, I didn't. I don't think it's a real big deal. It kind of gets lost in the seam after you fill it. But okay, and I go backwards, and that part is done. Okay, so it's all turned and stitched around here, and you've got two openings, one at the top and one here. Now you need to fill them. I usually fill the small one first, and I just put the funnel in like this, and I've got, you know, I would put my rice in here, and I would put this there, and fill it up, and um, it's about a quarter of a cup per in here. Um, and then after I fill that, I would take liquid stitch and put that here on the seam and a couple of clothespins and pinch it shut. Uh, and it dries pretty fast. And you would also want to, you can do this at the same time once you've got that shut. I also, this is kind of up in the air. This is a bigger opening, so you don't really have to use the funnel. You could just use your fingers and pour it in like that, but be careful because you might get rice all over the floor too. Uh, you don't want to use rice if you live in a humid area or food. You be careful about that. Just check um, with your, you know, what what your uh, what your protocol would be for where you live. <laughs> and uh, we live in Bend, Oregon, the Northwest, so it's never been a problem here. But we don't have a lot of humidity. So, um, so then you would uh, have your techie rest all done in full and you can give it to a friend with the little label that comes with it or make sure you keep a couple for yourself they are fun to make uh i made one out of a, i don't have it here it's at home made one out of a tea towel and it said yes i sew but uh no i don't i won't hem your pants that was really funny so see if you can find that one at your um local shop Okay, so any questions, you can all, always email us at info at and we love to see your creations too. Have a great day.